Hi, everyone. I am Demi. I am the host and social media editor for Indie 1023, and I'm here with Dylan Cartledge. I hope anybody can see me now and do really robotic. I feel like I'm Channing Tatum in Step Up 2 right about now. I'm just like out here, body out popping on Zoom, like do, <laughs> doing everything. But I'm very glad to be here, Demi. How, how are you? Oh, I am good. It is very, it's a nice day. I'm here in I'm here in Denver, Colorado. We were just talking about where Dylan is, and I have never heard of this town in the UK. So explain, explain it for our viewers again, because this is fun. So I am from a place in the UK that nobody's ever heard of, I'm presuming. And if you have, I probably know you and you probably live in my back garden. I don't know. I hope so. Uh, it's a place called Redcar. It's a small seaside, a small seaside town in the northeast of England in an area called Teesside. So seaside, Teesside, a little bit of thing going on there. But the closest equivalent that I could give you to somewhere in the US to the vibe of the place is probably somewhere like Detroit. Uh, as it's in the wake of like a, a massive like industrial closure it was a mm. it was an area that was known for industry it was known for steel production and that's closed down so it's kind of been a little bit of a mothbally kind of place since then but that has forced people to be super creative and take yes. everything they get and you know it's it's bring it's, it's, it's pressure making diamonds out here so um and that has nothing to do with my career because I am not yet a diamond that wasn't that was not some sort of set up or humble brag I wish I was that slick but I'm really not uh and yeah you're that's the me. diamond that is <laughs> yeah 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 okay. I am the diamond uh, they, they, they do they do say I am Minecraft some people call me Minecraft some people call me a uh, bejeweled you know Farmville I, I'm, I'm there yes <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us from the UK because uh, the time difference there is stark in comparison to Denver. So I hope true. that you are having a nice night. But anyways, we have so much to talk about. You guys are, thank you for watching, but you guys um, missed our full conversation about <laughs> um, filters on Zoom and just all sorts of stuff. We're going to have a fun time. It's great. Yes. <laughs> So I want to know a little bit about your background. So mm -hmm. you're getting ready to put out this debut album, but I want to go back and I want to learn about how did you get started in music? Yes. Yeah, so it's a little, I guess it's a little bit of a sad story in the sense that like my musical journey and this album and everything that I, you know, hope to sort of encapsulate with my music is hand in hand with my past. I had a very, very kind of traumatic upbringing um, you know, lots of uh, kind of neglect and abuse. So I was raising kind of a very abusive household and I had to kind of essentially father my younger brother who is on the autistic spectrum. And I just had a really, really kind of messed up childhood and ended up moving away with a foster family. Uh, and that's really when, you know, a lot of the music began to kind of take place. But I, I really came to a crossroads in my life when I was young, when I was seeing the situation I was in, a lot of people around me. And I was kind of like, if I don't do something here, you know, I came to a fork in the road and it was like, I could do nothing and just accept that I'm going to be in maybe another uh, kind of statistic and potentially be, you know, on, in, on drugs, in prison or worse, or, you know, try my best to try and not let my experiences define me and try to, to, to try and make a better life for me and my brother via my music or whatever it is I was going to choose to do. And ultimately, I've chosen to embark on this, you know, kind of artistic journey, wherever that takes me and really try to encapsulate, encapsulate my experiences and make an artistic statement about them, uh, which is my forthcoming album. And this is really what it's about. It's, it's me. And, and this is how I've, I've really yeah, I've gotten, it, gotten into music and, and, and how I'm using it today. So with all of that going on with your upbringing and just all the things that you had to overcome in order to get to that to, to, to this point today. Um, who were your influencers or did you have any mentors or anybody in music or were you just like, I'm going to figure this out and I'm just going to go in head first? Yeah, well, it, it's, it's, it, it was a little bit, I know there'll be people listening that can, can totally relate, but sometimes when you're in, you know, situations like that or even just going through rough patches, it can feel mega isolating. You can feel like you're on an island. I definitely felt massively disenfranchised from a lot of other, you know, uh, children and opportunities. And I really, yeah, I really did feel like my situation was a, an island in and itself in what my world was at that point in time and really didn't feel right. I felt very ostracized and really my, I guess, path back into sort of feeling connection to, to, 
to my life and, and to my surroundings was, was music and, and artists like uh, Kid Cudi, Lupe Fiasco, Kid Cudi in particular, I really quote Kid Cudi as, as, as a rapper and as an artist that essentially saved my life. His music essentially saved my life in the sense that I've lo- I was a massive hip hop fan, you know, I began rapping about my experiences and, and you know, I was as big as a fan of, you know, Lupe Fiasco, Kid Cudi, uh, Kanye West, and I'm a massive fan of obviously, you know, 50 Cent and b- everybody rapping about being in the club early 2000s, you know, yes. you know P. Diddy on that, P. Diddy on that Grey Goose deal, <laughs> we got, you know, Jay-Z on his Hennessy deal, everybody out here, you know, rocking it, living up, I was loving that, but also I kind of felt like I wasn't necessarily, you know, drinking Grey Goose or in the club at the time or you know you know uh, out on a speedboat or you know on a T-Pain vibe it was it was something a lot you know it it was something that a far cry from that although I would love that to be the case and it was really you know Kid Cudi that I really felt for the first time that music could be more than just an mp3 Mm. and to hear this guy who seemingly had it all in, in my you know kind of childish view um of you know being successful and making music for a record label and releasing albums and for him to be saying listen you know I've got demons too you know I'm I'm, I've got emotional issues and and I also feel lonely you know and and I want other people to to know that if you are feeling that way it's it's not it's it's not you know something that shouldn't be normalized and it's something that other people do experience and that was that really you know it really gave me something that I got from nobody else in my life at that point in time. There was no mentors, there was no, you know, father figures, anything like this. And so really music essentially taught me things that I, I guess, you know, most people kind of should hope to know uh, when they're not feeling so great. And so, yeah, really, I hope that answers the question. I kind of forgot what the question was. I'm blubbering out <laughs> so much, but that's, yeah. No, I hope you that answered answers it. it, whatever it was. <laughs> no, you answered it in like your music influences. And I think that, it's so important that you mentioned that, yes, I'm listening to all of this music and these rappers who have this like insane lifestyle, but at the same time, listening to Kid Cudi and him being like, hey, not everything is like flowers and roses and champagne over here. You know, I have mental health issues and I'm going through some other struggles and things like that. It's really important for kids and people in general to like see that and have that representation there. And lets them know like, hey, you're not completely alone in this, which I think is just so powerful, which leads me to talking about your debut album, um, Hope Above Adversity, which it's coming out July 8th, I believe. Uh, Yeah, July 9th, I believe. July 9th, July 9th. July 8th is the pre-order and you guys should get on that. Um, But yeah, speaking of um, your debut album, you wrote this beautiful, but really striking caption on Instagram, just detailing um, what the story behind this album is. And I just think that this is a moment in your life that is very vulnerable, but I think is worth sharing that story to your fans. So what are you hoping that your fans come away from, like taking in this album? Like what, what do you hope that they experience? Yeah, definitely. And and this is the thing, I think, you know, as much as, you know, me as a person and, and kind of how I relate to my music and, and what I've talked about, my experiences and obviously my story, all those things are, you know, obviously important to me. Um, and obviously my view of, of music and, and how I consume music. But I also, you know, this music has also made that if somebody needs to get something from it or would like to get something from it, if they if you're going through a tough time, then hopefully they can. But also, if you just want to listen and shake it like a Polaroid picture, I'm totally down for that too. Because sometimes, you know, I don't want to have you know music to just be a, a vessel for messages. And, and I, I really do think that we live in an age where nobody really should be told what to do or how to take from things. Or you know, kind of individuality is reigning more so than ever, and a lot of social norms are being broken down, uh, rightfully so, in a lot of ways to be able to you know give people more freedom and more personality and individuality in an age that seems increasingly kind of you know whomped in in lots of, of ambiguous uh kind of social aspects and, and things that seem to be yeah making it harder and harder to identify yourself um and so really I kind of feel like my hope is that you know people can can listen to, the, to this body of work and to listen to this album and, and really just I guess feel a little snapshot into who I am um, as a person and, and, and who I am and what I represent and what my story is 
Uh, but also, you know, if, <clears throat> pardon me, if people just want to have a listen, uh, shake it like a Polaroid picture, get a little bit of Stevie, a little bit of Outcast, a little bit of Black Keys, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of uh, that, that Salt Bay on the vibe, you know, yes. get yourself in there and, and dig deep. It's all in there. But also, if you want to dig a little bit deeper and, and like something that has a little bit of substance, a, a little bit under something under the surface, there's all you can scratch that back if you'd like to, too. Right, because you have you have some really fun singles that are on there that we're playing right now, like Anything Could Happen is on there and Molasses is on there. So it's not all doom and gloom, guys, but it is nice to have those relatable storytelling songs on there as well. And um, also in that caption, you mentioned that a lot of this album was created during quarantine. So last year, right? Uh, yes, uh, a lot of this album was created during quarantine. I, I had really bad asthma, and so and I'm not sure how the lockdown works. We know where anybody is who's listening, but where we were are in the UK, it was very much if you know if you've got kind of underlying health conditions, you know, with your lungs or whatever it may be, you've kind of got to stay indoors. So I was kind of inside, like a lot of people were for seven months, and right. I come to a little bit of a, a little bit of a creative big brick wall, and was it, it, it was basically like a small seaside town version of The Shining, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. If anybody's seen that. Uh, and it was me basically, you know, me versus my creativity, you know, popping through the door like, hello, Dylan. Bro, oh what do you, think? you know, like time to write, time to write a song. The red what room, a red room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah and, 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 <laughs> there was literally, I would, I would, I would wake up every morning. I would go downstairs, you know, there was snow outside and there was a, you know, groundskeeper or something. Uh, and then when I'd turn around and open my door and get breakfast, there would be two little twins at the end of the hall who were small, they were black and they had afros like me. Um, and that was really, yeah, really twisted kind of scene. Um, but no, it, 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 jokes aside, uh, it was, uh, yeah, I was, in, I was in a little bit of a, a tough spot creatively. You know, the lockdown was getting me down like a lot of people um, and I was losing my motivation. And I felt like I was so close to achieving this dream, uh, you know, based on everything I've just said in terms of being able to make this album. But also then the year I was supposed to go out and, and do it all, the pandemic hits and, you know, it was kind of, what do I do now? And, you know, I had these yeah. old kind of demos and a few songs lying around. And then I ended up, you know, kind of scrapping the idea that I had in my head and the ideas that everybody had in their head coming into lockdown, you know, plans got thrown out the window and having to adjust. And then, you know, I had moved my studio into my house and mm. I began to kind of make music from there. I started working with a producer called Egg White, who's a fantastic producer, he's worked with the likes of Adele, Lorna Del Rey, um, Paloma Faith, lots of amazing artists, even Celine Dion, weirdly. Too. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, Edwin from from the Glass Animals, uh, who's amazing and an amazing mixing engineer called Dan Parry, and really just began striking a chord with them and making this music. That the point of reference was kind of like Sly and the Family Stone was kind of a halfway house between a lot of the older influences that the Egg loved and some of the newer hip hop stuff that I brought to it. Yeah, and we really yeah connected on like there's a right going on Sly and the Family Stone and that whole style of like a bit of wonky funk, you know, soul. Yeah. And just, you know, individualistic, characteristic music and and really ran with that and followed with that. And then, you know, I began to just bang pots and pans together in my in my back room in my house and, you know, <laughs> kind of record myself at home. And we made, we made the album. Yes. So even with all of that <clears throat> going on last year, all the craziness, and I know the UK had a very strict lockdown. So yeah, just trying to fit in what does it look like to record? What does it look like to produce and songwrite while being in the middle of a pandemic? It was just crazy, but you did it. And this yep. album is going to be coming out on July 9th. So just make sure that you guys go and check that out. Uh, well, I also want to talk a little bit about your socials because even though social media yeah. isn't everything that you put out there, I just feel like your, especially your TikTok. So if you guys aren't following Dylan on TikTok, you need to go and find his profile on TikTok. But on TikTok, you are just so warm and hopeful. You talk about mental health, but you also like beatbox over random sounds, which is hilarious. Yeah. And I just love your social following. It is just such a refreshing look into an artist's life because like you make it feel very natural and normal. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you very much because that is a, that is a very kind of you to say. And it actually a shock to me hearing it because, you know, every time I pick that phone up, it's been like a, 
you know, I, I felt like, uh, you know, I, I felt a little bit like Two-Face trying to use it, you know, Batman villain in the sense that every time I pick up the phone and record myself, it, it sort of feels like, uh, I don't know, it feels like, it feels like Tom, uh, like, I guess Tom Cruise in War of the Worlds or something crazy like that. Uh, I feel like when I'm wrangling social media and, and using platforms like that, it, it, it's just something that strikes anxiety into me, but I'm really glad that it feels, it, it feels kind of, it feels natural and wholesome because uh, I feel like that's half of the gag but thank you very much and I, yeah. yeah I do enjoy you know putting myself out there a little bit and yeah there isn't many like I say you know anybody that listening you know you'll, you'll be you'll be hard pressed to find many random you know UK foster kids walking around the music industry with afros making you know outcast black keys type music and, and, and I'm flying the flag man I'm, I'm flying the flag I love it with the Rick and Morty shirt on as well. yes <laughs> You gotta well, be done. You gotta be done. You know, you know, you know. <laughs> you know, I just, I just know, you know. <laughs> I need to know. Um, and then I have uh, one more question for you and then I'll let you go. But um, okay. what is the most random sound or TikTok video that you've wrapped over? <laughs> Woo, okay, man. The most random sound that I wrapped over, I, I probably- I watched the TikTok. tattoo one and- Oh God! Yeah, the the tattoo one. There was a random. There was a tattoo. There was one as well. It was crazy. Where it was just like a sprinkler in a field. Uh, but but to be honest, this the me rapping on TikTok over random sounds is no different from real life. I mean, really, I'm out in everyday life. People see honestly. People see me in everyday life, and they they think I'm joking. But I'm actually that crazy that I'm I'm out doing this stuff in in public all the time. In yes. fact, when I before I started before I became an artist, you know, kind of well before I became an artist, but before I was <laughs> doing music full time. Yeah. You know, before I was born conceptually, you know, <laughs> before <laughs> before I started doing music full time, I worked in I worked in a call center. Um, uh, obviously, I don't know if the same in the US, but like you know, uh, banks and people will have like when you phone them up and somebody's yes. on the other phone end of the phone, like oh hello, what do you need? And it was a really tough job, man. You know, I was getting yeah. for somebody who's quite you know improvisational and you know kind of fluid in that sense. It was very rigid and stick to the script, and I really found it tough. Uh, but and and a little anecdote which would explain kind of like the vibe on like how kooky I am and these random things. And so I was working in this call center. I was trying to get my uh, first recordings together as a solo artist because I've been in a band for a little bit before. And uh, so how it works in the call center is usually I was working for this bank on the phone and they'll listen to your calls remotely. So your managers and all the managers will just pick random calls that you've had and sit exactly. there with a checklist and be like, oh, you know, uh, you did this right, you did this wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've looked at your scores from today. You went to the toilet for two seconds longer than you should have today, whatever it might be. But oh. that, that's just the vibe, right? So anyway, one time they, they got my call and my manager came over, tapped me on the shoulder, he's like, yo, Dill, we need to talk, man. Like, you know, I, I need to talk to you. So I was like, okay, cool, man. So I came over. And they just had, there was about three people sat there and they had a pair of headphones, a very concerned looks on the face. It was like an episode of The Office, you know, UK office or US office, whichever you prefer. And they just said, you know, have these headphones and take a listen. So I put the headphones in and it's a, it, it, it's a call that they picked up of mine. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, hi, you've come through to Dylan. How are you doing? Da, 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 da. And they're like, oh yeah, I want to do this. I was like, oh, sorry, two seconds. Let me just put you on hold. And then I got my phone out and hit record and was like, or whatever it was like, like recording song ideas and they were like they were like you cannot you cannot do this like you're going to be fired if you do this and it was literally just like oh how are you through the deal and blah blah and like oh yeah I just need to check my mortgage blah blah I was like yo sorry two seconds can I just put you on hold and I was like yeah, no, no, no. oh my. whatever it was you know just like making random noises <laughs> so yeah I had to leave in the end because I was probably going to get fired or, or leak government secrets I don't know which one was first I highly recommend it for any of you guys watching that are working in call centers to absolutely do that. Honestly, can you just imagine you're trying to defuse a bomb or something like that and like somebody's just being super irrational, just heated on the phone with you. And then you just like, hey, can you hold on real quick? And you just start like beatboxing. That would just diffuse the situation for me, at least. I think oh, I would come out of that and be like, I don't even know why I called it anymore. I'm not even mad anymore. So. Oh, God. It, literally now Mission Impossible and James Bond production companies come for me, uh, <laughs> come to me for tips on how to defuse situations. Or they don't even go to Navy SEALs anymore. People that have been in the Army, you know, CIA, whatever it is, they come to me because I, only I know how to defuse the situations. Like there's a level above like 
20 year experience bomb diffusers. It's like, you know, Dylan, the call center vibe. Like, that's me now. Hey, can you the music secondary? I'm just going to spit this out <laughs> real quick. You know? really that's incredible. That is probably and, the and, best and, work story I've heard in a while. And sorry, and on that note as well, not long after that, I ended up leaving. And uh, because it was going around the office that this was happening and people were kind of talking. And then this one guy come over and I was telling him, oh, you know, this has happened. And he was like, Dylan, why are you still here? And then I left. I literally just left. I left. I quit my job. And I said, thank you very much. He said, you're very yes. welcome. Don't tell the company that I've told you to do this. But what I do want you to do is if you make an album, I want you to credit me on the album. And he's on the back of the special thank yous on my album. Just to put that out there. Oh, my God. Honestly, if you're still in contact <laughs> with this person, I just... I love that. It's a full circle moment, you know? Yes. Thank, shout out to this call center who put Dylan on, who maybe might have fired him, but at least gave him some inspo, you know? Yes, 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 yes. This is amazing. Well, before I let you go, I have one more question. So I saw that yes. you announced some, some UK tours. Do you plan on coming to the US anytime soon? Oh, I, I, if COVID allows, there isn't anything that I can announce just yet, but if COVID allows, I would love to be able to come and play some shows this year. I can't say when, um, and you, if you guys follow me on social media, I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, uh, as Demi said, I'm on Facebook, I'm basically anywhere. You could, you know, get me on any site pretty much, um, except from OnlyFans. I don't yet have an OnlyFans <laughs> account. Uh, that may be soon. Uh, who just knows? Be your pro. But, Yes, Imagine. yes, yes. Dylan, Dylan Cartledge Music, you can get me on there. And if you keep your eyes peeled soon, hopefully, fingers crossed, with, you know, COVID permitting, I shall be flying over the farm soon to come and play some funky, groovy tracks in my, in my, in my, in my chin dig and my deal. Well, I really hope so, because I would love to see you live. And yeah, I just want to say thank you so, 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 so much for talking with me today. And for all the laughs, you're just such a joy to talk to, truly. <laughs> hey, thank you, vice versa. I've had an absolute blast. Uh, thank you to everybody at uh, 102.3 or 103.2. You nailed it. You nailed it. Okay, 102.3. Indie What is the point in me even signing off right now? Because you already did hey. it for me, you know? <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you to everybody <laughs> at 102.3 Indie in Denver. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to come into this. I'm going to come into the studio hopefully soon. I'll bring my buddy pop in and my terrible work stories with me and hopefully some, you know, groovy Anderson pack esque you know, rapping bass playing going on and I'll be yes. there. Yes. Well, we cannot wait. But in the meantime... Thank you for watching, as we said, and you can hear Dylan's latest singles, Molasses, and Anything Could Happen right now on MD 1023 and for all of our other sessions at home, go and check out our YouTube page. Make sure to follow us on our socials, follow Dylan on all of his. You will not be disappointed, and you can find more sessions at home on md 1023org and thanks for watching, everyone. KVLQ, let's rock it. Your boy Dale, ah, yellow brick row, yellow brick row. I say good morning, I need to feed your soul. Good morning, I need to let you go. Oh, sad and ready for the big world. Any kind of visual, never really did, girl. Yes, through the day they move. Any kind of story they just play, they do. Yeah, are we gonna throw back? So you better think twice if you wanna talk trash now. Everybody's ghosting on who loves the most, the better get roasted. Woo, woo, them 
Bet I can't see when the prize is up and lies to make a move bleed, yeah Woo! Better the life than fear You know you got the best to see Why don't you stop and blame the jump on something you did? Ooh, they say to make change That you can't just sit round and loot that way Cause they'll say, they'll say
Thank you. Climb down, climb down, stand up when that climb down. Oh, let it climb down, climb down. Let the morning sun climb down, and yeah, I got new, brand new. Got a change, and it's all brand new. Oh, yeah, I got new, got new. On the side, we're singing that new. Yeah, it's all right, all right. Both feet firm on the ground, all right, and yeah, it's all right, all right. Got trouble, and that's just fine. Along the water, I see my face, and who's looking back now? Don't get complacent.